Hey guys, I'm Luke Huckaba. I'm a virtualization architect on the managed virtualization team here at Rackspace. And this is part four of my architecting a DR solution with SRM. This one is maintaining, migrating, and upgrading. So first we'll jump right into to maintaining. One of the most common things I see are new VMs being built out, but they're not protected in SRM. A lot of times a VM is built and you set it and forget it. But you have to make sure you do that extra step of logging into SRM and actually clicking configure protection on the protection or the VM in the protection group. When you delete a VM, it'll actually prompt you in vCenter and say, oh, you're deleting this, it's managed by SRM. So you have to remember to go into SRM and tell it to remove it. Removing is not so much a big deal. If you fell over and that VM's not there, it won't power on. It might cause your recovery plan to stop, but you just run it again. Um, but if you forget to protect one and you fell over and that VM didn't come with it, you might have a tough time explaining that one. Anytime you add a new data store, you want to make sure it's a member of whatever replication group stuff you're using, like if it's EMC's Recover Point or NetApp SnapMirror, make sure it's a member of that re replication set or SnapMirror pairing before you actually add it into vCenter. Once that's set up, add it into vCenter as you normally would, and then go into the array managers in SRM and click the refresh button. Make sure you can see that in the devices section, make sure that new volume is there or that new data store is there, make sure that's all visible. Once that's done, then you can either build new VMs on it or storage vMotion VMs onto it. And uh, just as a, a health check, once you do that, make sure you log into SRM in the actual protection group and make sure those VMs are still visible. Anytime you remove a data store, work exact back, exact opposite. Mo storage vMotion everything off of it. Actually remove it from vCenter, rescan those array managers, make sure that it's not seen anymore, remove it from the replication set and you're good to go. That's pretty much all there is for maintaining. There's not a whole lot. Anytime you add a new VLAN or port group, you want to make sure you add those into your resource mappings as well if they're going to be used for SRM. Now migrating. Unfortunately, there's really no migration mechanism or migration tool uh, to go between different SRM pairings. You can use SRM to migrate from one data center to another, but say if you have two different pairings, say you have three data centers and you have a pairing like A and pairing B or pairing one, pairing two, however you want to say it, you cannot migrate from pairing one to pairing two. You have to actually remove everything and then build the other side. If, if it's, you'd have to have two separate um, vCenter pairings too, so you'd have to actually move that VM or host to that other uh, vCenter. Not exactly the nicest thing to do, but that's what it is right now. I've requested that uh, functionality be added for migrations. Um, we'll see if that gets added. The only real migration you could do is if you were building new infrastructure VMs, like a new SRM VM or a new um, vCenter VM. You build new ones, but you point it to the old database. It's not really a migration, but that's just if you're kind of replacing old VMs, however you want to do it, instead of doing like an in-place upgrade to the OS, I'd recommend just building a new OS and then pointing to the old database. Upgrading gets a little hairy. There's a lot more involved here in upgrading than you think. You want to make sure you upgrade your source side, which is a protected side vCenter first, which is fine. That vCenter is going to be offline, but your recovery side is still going to be online. So you're protected in the sense of that there's a disaster you can fell over. So like I said, vCenter first, then your SRM server. If there are any new SRAs, you want to go ahead and install those. Chances are you're probably on the latest SRA as it is, so you may not have to worry about that. You don't have to uninstall, you don't have to reinstall or anything like that. When that's done, you want to upgrade, if you're using vSphere replication, upgrade the appliances and any vSphere servers that you may have. After that's done, then move on to your target side. Upgrade your target vCenter and your target SRM server. While you're doing this, you are a little vulnerable. Um, if there's a disaster at your source site, it's going to be difficult for you to fell over. You're going to have to finish that installation and then fell over. Once SRM is upgraded, or vCenter, then SRM, then you do the exact same path. Any SRAs, uh, vSphere replication. Once that's done, you want to go through and actually log into SRM and click the reestablish connection button. And I actually do this from the source to the target and then from the target back to the source. It makes sure that each site trusts the other certificate. And it's just an extra step to make sure you're good to go there. You also want to, if you have the visa replication at this point, you need to go in and make sure they're reconnected to one another. Once all that is happy, everything's really running. If you were in a disaster at that point, you're perfectly protected. But if you want to upgrade your ESXi host, you need to do your target side first. That does leave you vulnerable, so I don't recommend you do them all at once. Just do like a rolling upgrade. 
The last thing you want to do, the reason why I say do target first, the last thing you want to do is upgrade your source, and then if you accidentally upgraded your VM, the virtual hardware, to a higher version, then you can't fell over to those older hosts. So you make sure you do not want to be in that situation. So upgrade your target ones first. Once those target ones are online at the new version, say 5.5 or 6.0 when it comes out, then upgrade your source ones to 5.5 or 6.0, whatever you're going to. Once your hosts are at the same level, then go and upgrade your VM tools, VM virtual hardware, and you're good to go. So at this point, we've actually, we've planned, we've architected, we've deployed, and we've learned how to maintain a very useful and robust disaster recovery solution with SRM. I hope you enjoyed this series, and again, follow me on Twitter. Let me know if you have any feedback. Look me up at, at Tap Huck. Thanks. Have a good one, guys.